everyone. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. Uh, my name is Roy Martin from North Amber AV. I head up the AV solution side of the AV business here at North Amber. Myself and the team work closely with the North Amber account managers to help bring existing and new technology to market. We also assist in specifying for projects using qualified solutions for AV resellers. Today, North Amber AV have brought together three experts in the industry who will give you some insight today to the LED solutions options available in the market right now from AOTO Electronics, Matrox and BTEC. We'll be covering everything from mount options from BTEC, wall control or solutions from Matrox, as well as the latest LED technology from Carl Anthony, who will kick things off today for us. If you do have any questions at the end of the session, we'll have plenty of time for that uh, when we finish the three sessions coming up shortly. Carl, over to you to uh, take off the uh, AOTO presentation. Thanks, Roy. So, just a quick overview, I'll start with, uh, from AOTO. So, we were founded in 1993 specializing in designing LED display solutions. So we're a global company. We're based over in about 27 different countries and we've done about 15,000 global projects so far. And we were also the first LED display company to be listed in the Chinese stock market. Here's just a quick map of where we are and you can see uh, our dedication to R&D as well there. We have 600 plus patents. So just to give you a, uh, an overview of how we approach this market. We, we, we tried to give you a 360 degree sales support. So that's all the way through from pre-sales to determine the solution, supporting you through your sales cycle, helping to track throughout the fulfillment, and also providing a full app of sales service. And hopefully that will, will want you to continue to keep working with us and, and we'll continue low, uh, a loyalty program all the way through with you. So this is our uh, factory over in Huiza. I think, I think Roy, Roy can attest that this is slightly different from from the, the other Chinese LED factories you may see out there. We've invested over $50 million. And uh, it tends to be uh, more of a manufacturing from, from uh, raw materials all the way through, rather than just being an assembly client. Uh, Roy, you can attest to that maybe? Yeah, sure. So I was lucky enough to attend the uh, factory tour um, in 2018, and it's definitely differs from the other uh, manufacturers or claim to be manufacturers out in Shenzhen. A lot of the guys out there tend to be assembly plants, uh, whereas Aoto are full manufacturer, having plastic molding area, machine shop, uh, indoor outdoor pre stage testing area. So yeah, def definitely a whole different proposition to probably 80% of you know claim to be manufacturing LED. It's it's a different offering. Thanks, Roy. And uh, you can also see our uh, R&D facility in which we, we've invested $20 million in as well. So this is where all our new lines are coming from. And uh, that's the product line I want to talk to you today is the CV series. So our CV series has come from a place where our customers have tended to said that, yes, we really enjoy the quality and we understand the design um, that's gone into your products, but it's not economically as aggressive enough as we require for our clients in the market. So taking everything that is AOTO and taking our proprietary mini LED technology, we've developed the CV series, which is more uh, appropriate for the current market. Just a quick overview of, of mini LED that we use here. It's actually our proprietary patent. It's a four in one LED solution, but we, we do believe that um, th this technology is superior to the other technologies on the market. And actually we allow uh, the use of our four in one mini LED technology across the market without uh, any restrictions or licensing fees or anything like that because we really do believe in the uptake of this. Just a quick overview, it's, uh, the 4-in-1 Mini LED actually is, um, it provides a more robust and, and stable solution, which actually you'll see in my marketing in a moment, but we, we may opt to take a hammer to it. I wouldn't recommend taking a hammer to it, but it's definitely a lot more robust for the public environment. It's uh, front access maintenance, so we actually provide the vacuum tool so you can pull that one off quite easily and also make the installation a lot easier as well. Uh, power consumption is probably around 20% lower than everything else that's on the market at the moment in terms of our competitors. And uh, we use our own aluminium uh, heat, disp heat dispensation um, uh, cabinets at the back. So it's a fanless and noiseless uh, heat reduction. So just a quick overview of the five points I'm gonna look at here. It's, one is actually that super rugged idea where it's very tough. Um, Let's not take a hammer to that, but let's we, we can test that. We can be quite happy with it. It's ultra thin, which also makes it very light, and, and the shipping and logistics cost is bringing down, which also uh, applies to our environmental um, uh, our environmental uh, efficiencies as well. Uh, RI protection, smooth finishing, the moire effect. So this is the hammer I was talking about. Like I say, it's very strong. It is definitely more designed for the um, public market, but let's not take a hammer to that. 
uh, ultra thin and ultra light. And I can tell you today that I've been working on a few projects. And when compared to uh, some of our other projects, because we're, we're significantly low, we're looking at about 20, 30% reduction in shipping costs as well, because of the, 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 the weight is only 5 kgs in comparison to 8, 9, 10 kg of competitors on the market. Uh, eye protection was certified for low blue light certification. So very good for public spaces, for your, your corporate workers, and, and also for being outside or in airports, anywhere like that. Uh, smooth finish. So we, uh, our, our installation and maintenance allows us to actually be able to plug that in uh, and place that module so easily that there will be no steps or gaps and it's, it's quite easy for anybody to do through that. But we can always provide training and we have engineers that we're able to dis dispatch the site to help support that as well. And uh, the reduced more effect. So for the corporate environment and, and for anywhere like that, it's, it's very useful. So for instance, if you look at uh, an investor meeting where they're going to be having that uh, each year, and they have to film that and stream that. Um, well, this reduced more effect means that there won't be a distraction of that kind of phasing and wave in the background that you would see with um, other products, especially with our uh, four in one mini LED. And just to give you a quick overview of the products that we have available, so we run this CV series through from 1.2 to 2.5. Uh, 1.2 and 1.5 are, are both four in one mini LEDs. And actually, we provide a 1.8 and 2.5, which are both in SMD. Um, so that's it's, it's a lot more economically suitable, especially for those environments where you don't necessarily need to have such a high and robust protective uh, solution. Just to give you a quick idea of if you're not aware of that, but what the pixel pictures mean, uh, usually we just take that whenever it's a 1.5 millimeter, we just take that, we convert that to meters, and that's what we believe the minimum viewing distance should be from there. So it's just a quick overview of, of what that looks like here. And just to give you an overview of our applications, first, of course, you have the meeting room, um, which is very traditional in the boardrooms now, and especially it's very COVID relevant that you want to create as much space and be able to put people, in, be, allow people to still be able to see what's on the screen, but also create those distances which are, allow you to be in the same place at the same time. And uh, also from a control room and, and monitoring application. So um, for, that's it from my side, and hopefully now I'm going to pass over to Rob and Rob will show you a little bit more of what needs to be required to be able to deliver this kind of solution in the background. Thanks for that, Carl. Um, just to um, uh, let people know as well, with the, with the products on here, North Amber offer uh, you know, proper value add with site surveys, uh, pre-post sales uh, support, right through the portfolios that we go through today. Uh, so if you have any questions on that separately, uh, please let me know directly. Uh, we'll hand over to uh, Rob now, take you through the controller side of the LED solution uh, with some different options there. Again, it's something we have an expert within the North Amber business that can support to a very high level on wall controllers and solutions from the Metro Skies. Um, I'll hand over to Rob now, who can take you through that proposition. Okay, I'm Rob Moody with uh, with Matrox, as you know, and clearly, as you've just seen, we're sharing the platform today with AOTO. LED is a great technology. It's evolving all the time. Uh, almost every time you look, there's better pitch, better reliability, better viewing angle, falling price point, and so on. Um, but are we, as the presenters, has joined up as uh, as, as Roy claims? You know, is LED giving the the wall controller uh, manufacturers new challenges? And that's an interesting question, actually, because some of the controller manufacturers are making a big fuss about it. But Matrox, we don't make a fuss. This is a uh, this is an image. Well, it's two images actually of a uh, um, of a 108 square meter LED wall driven by Matrox Mura wall, wall controller. We did this seven years ago. There's no fuss. You can read the case study on our website if you're inclined. As far as we're concerned, pixels are pixels. To us, it makes no essential difference if they're on a projector, a panel, or an LED module. There might be some differences, of course. Projectors might have overlap, bezels, uh, panels might have bezels, but the pixels are still the pixels. What matters to us is the connectivity. It doesn't matter what the screen diagonal is. We see the screen as its resolution. If we're presented with an HDMI that looks like 1920 by 1080 pixels with 8-bit color and 60 hertz refresh, then that's exactly how we treat it. And if the EDID is suggesting any other visa resolution, then we Treat it accordingly. That's what EDID was designed for. And guess what the aggregator units in the AOTO platform do? They aggregate multiple tiles and present an HDMI connector to us. Big walls like this present multiple HDMIs. No big deal. Meeting rooms, smaller, but 
no big deal. The only possible issue is when the shape is such that it doesn't actually match visa definitions at HDMI level. And in that instance, for us, it becomes a custom resolution or maybe custom timings. Again, no big deal. Uh, at least it isn't a big deal so long as we know in advance. We all know that in projects, the involved parties need to talk to each other before the execution phase to ensure the wrinkles are ironed out. Just don't leave that discussion till the, uh, till the switch on. So if there's no big issue, what am I going to talk about? Well, I can tell you that it's, uh, it's not going to be a presentation about a clutch of Matrox cards and their various different attributes. There would have been at least 10 different capture cards to start with. You've got no North Amber to take care of those sort of things for you, so you don't have to worry about it. Your client wants the big picture from you, so that's what we're going to focus on today. And if we're focusing on the user rather than us as the presenters, what sort of requirements do they come to you with? Well, there's more wolf scenarios than you can shake a stick at. This list is just the, the interactive ones. And even in COVID times, there are still walls being deployed, even in retail, though admittedly trade shows are a bit thin on the ground. In meeting rooms, there's loads of potential variations and interactive like ones like this would probably have been in that scenario. So if we've got lots of different scenarios, how do we simplify the task of addressing them? The user's going to have a multiplicity of things that they want aggregated onto the wall so that everyone can see them, of course. In a big meeting room, that same wall might even be repeated left and right of the presenter. Same in a control room, it might be repeated twice. An individual panel, or in our case today, our LED environment, the aggregator may well itself have multiple inputs. And that perhaps leaves content tied to that part of the wall, but it's the wall controller that gives the freedom to move them around to the right place, to different places as the meeting, the crisis, or the other scenario unfolds. And that means that that wall controller block in our diagram here has got to cope with a variety of different types of inputs in varying quantities and resolutions and potentially have a variety of outputs as well. I've put a few inputs and outputs up there just to uh, emphasize the point. If we zoom in now, it's the same diagram. We've just focused in on the uh, on the controller block. The, uh, not at the components, because we're not talking about that, but at the functions the user expects it to have. And this is what you'd have to expect to have to define with the client. And that, of course, is what we have to deliver to you. Bear in mind, these aspects might be multifaceted. Scaling might be up and, and down, maybe both. Splitting might be splitting a two by two composite image into elements so that you can move them around independently, or maybe it's a three by three that needs splitting, or maybe one more than one sort of uh, split simultaneously. Got to be able to cope with all of that. Client might not use these words either. They might say, I want to be able to put three laptops next to each other rather than say, I want to compare them. They might say, I want to share the screen with a breakout room downstairs rather than say, I need to stream the wall. They might say, I want the presentation to fill the whole screen or that part of the wall rather than talking about scaling. We've just got to join it up in the middle. And bear in mind, these, these inputs may actually be from other in-room aggregators. Maybe they're the video outputs of the VC, or maybe combining team sessions from multiple PCs onto a big screen so you can see everyone at once. Maybe the Wi-Fi aggregator of multiple laptops. We all know the click, here, click share sort of thing. Maybe that's coming in through a, a single HDMI. So that aggregator is in control of the arrangement of that part of the room. Or maybe the whole thing if it's mapped at, uh, in that way at a particular time. You might also get things that uh, perhaps IOTA have brought to the, uh, the party in terms of uh, connecting Wi-Fi devices direct into the, into the wall, out of the reach of the controller. But in this case, it's the, it's the controller and its key features that it can catch all of these things that it's been given without sacrificing the quality, the resolution, the frame rate or the color depth. It's all preserved at the point of capture. And that means if you need to fill the wall with it, you always get the best quality. And bear in mind those devices that say they've got a wall controller in them, maybe an HDMI extender, they're in general not very good at the wall control bit. So that's why we use a specialist device for doing this. And as we know, we've got to start from what the user wants to do and how they want to do it. From here, North Amber is going to start to propose the controller hardware that's needed, what sort of inputs, the signal formats that need to be juggled, how many of them are there, where's the switching going to be most effective, you might actually need a lot more inputs than the client thought. 
how are you going to use it? What sort of control surface do we need? What about the audio? All of these things are part of the North Amber consideration in putting the wall controller together. And even more importantly, from my perspective, what was it that was important that the client didn't think was important? A console screen, for example, a screen where someone can interact with the system without it being visible on the wall. So they can have perhaps con control software resident on the controller and access from the con uh, console screen. Or maybe they can find out the versioning of the drivers, say from the rack room, for the support functions that need to happen whilst there's actually a meeting using the wall. They never think of that. Often they end up covering the control window with content because they didn't think where they were going to put the control window. And that's uh, is a great benefit of bringing in the experience of sophisticated controllers. Here's another one that most users haven't considered. In meeting rooms where people are moving around, moving things like bags and coats, HDMI cables are easily pulled out. Their view of cabling comes from their own desktop experience where that doesn't happen. You as integrators, of course, would put the cables out of harm's way to make sure users are protected from themselves. But you can still get cables accidentally knocked in rack rooms and so on particularly with HDMI. It's the little things like this that stop HDMI's being pulled out that turn good systems into great systems. And great systems lead to returning customers, of course. Yes, of course, it's got cards in the middle, but we're not going to uh, sneak in the, the specs of the cards here. What we are going to uh, give you is the reassurance that what's inside may be out of sight, but it's where a lot of the clever stuff is added. And that's precisely what Matrox brings to the party. Those components that are inside that controller have won awards in their own right and made a superb ecosystem when combined into a wall control system. It's the Matrox bits that make the controller more reliable, more stable, higher image quality, more versatile than the others you might be looking at. I mentioned streaming earlier and thinking now about streaming out of the wall controller to other walls. The wall itself is no longer the endpoint, and that stream might be streaming out a source, might be streaming a window or a region of interest or even the whole wall. All of these things are possible to stream out to the repeater wall or perhaps as a recording, say it's streaming into a NAS as a record of how the event or the meeting played out. This is a very useful addition to the event logs that maybe CCTV um, VMS software might generate. It shows what the people involved could see when they took the action they did. And remember, aggregating things on the wall needs a focal point that can actually aggregate all these things. North Amber used the Matrox software and some others that enable manipulation of the content on the wall. This is where they set up the scenarios, the settings and the layouts, and they can be stored in the controller so that the room controller panel, or whichever option you favour, can call them up with simple button selection for easy use. And in many cases, of course, there's going to be a need to change what you've been given at a window by window level is possible. Software provides access to hardware processing. Hardware is almost always faster than software. Those are the values that we're bringing into the, into the party here. And to conclude from my point of view, don't let the user get to the decision point with, without realizing that all three of the elements being presented today are important. They must understand before budgeting that a wall consists of three things. And you're seeing all three today. They all have and they all need sophistication and they all need to be considered. The user typically only thinks initially of the first one. And because displays are high tech and the budget for that bit makes them sit up and take notice, they sort of assume that they don't need to have much more conversations. It is as easy as one, two, three, but for goodness sake, don't let them stop at one. I'm sure many of you will have been faced by a user who spent tens of thousands on display technology and now wants clever mounts and sophisticated management and manipulation of images for a couple of hundred pounds because that's all they've got left. Make sure that doesn't happen to you and us. But now it's time to learn about mounts. Thanks for that, Rob. Um, while we hand over to Chris, just to let everybody know, um, we also provide free on-site configuration for the Matrox wall controllers. Uh, so everything from uh, the pre-specification right through, we'll handhold all the way, either give you relevant training for free, or we'll come to site commission it alongside you for free of charge with one of our experts. Um, we'll hand over to Chris now, who can cover the uh, BTEC aspect of the LED solution. Thanks, Rob and Roy. Uh, good morning, everyone. 
I'm Chris Hobson, Technical Sales of BTEC, and today I'll talk a little about BTEC's direct view LED mounting solutions. Mounting an LED wall is a little more complex than your standard video wall, as there are no fixed phaser patterns. Uh, but in using the BTEC range of mounting solutions, it will take a lot of the complexity away for what should be a quick and clean install. Uh, in this presentation today, we'll look at the different mounting options available and how you can quickly spec an LED wall to your own requirements. We'll also take a more detailed look at the installation side of things. Uh, now, this slide is a, a key point. With our DV LED mounting solutions, we're using off-the-shelf components from our hugely successful System X range. Around 95% of what you see in this image is stocked en masse globally for a quick turnaround. The only custom element is the uh, black key plates, which can differ from panel to panel. Uh, there's another important point here as well, front and rear mounting. Uh, we offer front and rear mount options uh, for all panels, uh, particularly AOTO. Um, some panels mount from the front, meaning you bolt through the cabinet and into the vertical extrusion. Other panels mount from the rear, meaning you'd screw into the rear of the cabinet and drop them into the black key plates. All key plates are pre-installed at the correct point, saving costly installation time. BT9340 is our wall-mounted offering. BT9370 is our freestanding option. Uh, you can go to 4.2 meters high uh, without the need to tie back to the fabric of any building. 9371, uh, BT9371 is our mobile option. Uh, 3.6 meters high is the max you can go on this one. And finally, the bolt down BT9372, again, 4.2 meters high without the need to tie back. All of these options are fully expandable, so you can go as wide as you like uh, and as high as already mentioned, 4.2 meters or 3.6. Uh, some example installs. Uh, I'll quickly run through a few examples of installs around the globe. Uh, this was the uh, 11 by 3 Air Asia HQ in Malaysia. Then we have a bolt down configuration uh, that was a nine by four window display in front. Uh, this is a very special 174 panel installation for BBC Cardiff with the potential to upscale to 234 panels, uh, basically two lots of 17 by seven walls. Very nice indeed, that one. And at the home of football, uh, a project that I was personally involved with, so most proud. 14 by six bolt down solution for the raw box at Wembley. This has a surround built to fit flush, uh, to fit flush with the panels uh, in the flesh. This looks absolutely amazing. So what to do when you want something more specific to your own requirements? You can contact your North Amber account manager uh, with full project spec or for a fast turnaround on a full quotation, you can use the BTEC online configuration tool. First of all, select your preferred method of mounting. So wall, freestanding, mobile or bolt down. Then you add in the finer detail. So in this case, we've gone with five panels per row, over five rows. So five by five, you're adding in your panel dimensions, the weight, the brand, AOTO, and the model number, CV series. Then there's a section to add in um, the method of attachment. So as we've already touched on, uh, front mounted, rear mounted, uh, there's even a section if you're unsure. You can also request the front and rear mounted you can, you can also request uh, line drawings or a much more detailed cad model full cad model these are usually um requested when there's uh, a much bigger project so you're, you're adding in a surround or a rear cover or an enclosure of some description then we'd obviously need your details so there's a section where you can add in your BTEC supplier, 
would be North Amber. Uh, and I can then pass the information on to the North Amber account manager uh, within the hour, ideally. When a PO is confirmed, we'll set our highly skilled engineers to work. They'll draw the solution in CAD and produce a full bill of materials. They'll then precision cut and pre-build as much as possible in-house. This again saves costly installation time. So with the installation guide and a full drawing, uh, it should be a very quick and simple installation, a complete how-to on building a full LED wall to your specification. And I'll quickly run through just how easy it is to install. Firstly, you'll uh, extend the rails to the required length uh, using the silver rods, just to the left of the paper here. Then you'll add in your wall fixing kits and attach to the wall. And this is the most critical part, getting these two rails the correct distance apart, and then the rest of the wall will fall nicely into place. Then you're on to the interface arms, and it's just a matter of hooking the interface arms over the rails, securing loosely in position with the security screws top and bottom, and you can use the supplied spacer, installation spacer, to speed up getting those interface arms in exactly the right position. And you attach the cabinets, bottom to top, ideally until completed and then securing the security screws. For anything out of the ordinary, uh, such as mosaic or curved, we can work with you to build a full and proper solution. And thank you for watching. Back to Roy. Perfect, thanks guys. Um, so just a quick thank you to Carl, Rob and Chris for supporting the call today uh, and thank you for your, all for your time uh, uh, to join us. If you need any further information or support on LED solution, please contact the technical team at absupport at northamber.com or connect directly with your North Amber account manager. Thanks a lot. <laughs>